It's Sunday morning with Mark Sainsbury. It's uh, time for Mr. H, Harold Hillman, Dr. H, actually. He's the uh, the managing director, leadership coach, author, celebrity speaker, and regular here on Radio Live, the author of The Imposter Syndrome. Harold does a lot of work with businesses, sorting them out, putting them right where they've gone wrong and, you know, getting everything working. And this morning, he's going to talk to us about bosses being coaches and whether there's a difference. I've got to say, Harold... It just sounds a bit new. I mean, you know, they, they, they keep changing the sort of the goalposts on this stuff, don't they, as to, as to managers. They're supposed to be hard asses, and they're supposed to be part of the team, and then they're supposed to be this or that, or mentors. What is a boss supposed to be? Well, above and, and beyond anything else, Mark, I think the uh, key is that the boss has to be him or herself. And so that's the first thing. And, and there are a lot of models out there to just to really help a manager who's walking through the door every morning appreciate that um, across the next eight to ten hours, you know, they're going to be involved in a number of different conversations. Some of them feel more like manager conversations where you're tracking with a person around their day-to-day delivery and our things on track and that type of thing. And then some of your conversations are more mentor conversations around, you know, where's your career going? It's this coaching one, Mark, that has picked up a lot of steam and I think is valid for people to really understand that sometimes what people need is a coach um, and somebody who can really support them around, particularly if we put them into stretch and we tell them that we want to help them grow their capability. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Put yeah. them into stretch. Yeah. What's that mean? Just a, just stretching your own talents and abilities and well, things? Well, it is. It's like when somebody perhaps has gotten a little bit too comfortable in their current role so that they don't even have to think about it anymore. It's so easy that there's no challenge associated with it. And, and what I would suggest to your listeners, anybody who is managing someone else or a whole team is you've got to keep that person in stretch, meaning that you've got to build some challenge into their role. They're going to be required to do something different in the next six months or be a certain type of a leader or influence relationships differently. And so if we put people in stretch, it's good to run alongside them just like we position a coach doing so on the sports field where they can hear our voice, they can hear encouragement, they can take our advice on where they need to do some things differently, but we are affirming their progress as they move along. Because not everyone sort of gets the stretch, do they? I mean, it can be for some people, it'd be quite challenging and it could, you know, in, in fact, instead of building them up, could could even damage their confidence. It could be, Mark. What, 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 here's where the coaching part comes into play. When we tell someone that we are intentionally trying to grow their capability so we are going to put them into stretch the biggest thing that sometimes works against them is their own confidence and that's where we miss the opportunity as bosses that we don't stay close enough to people who are taking a bit of a risk making themselves a little bit vulnerable with respect to you know feedback that suggests that they're not getting it right and those types of things and and sometimes as bosses we aren't supportive enough around people taking a chance and trying to better themselves there're going to be some mistakes along the way but can we can we be like we are when we are running alongside our own kid who's four years old and learning to ride that bicycle and we let go of it and there they go and they can hear our voice and our encouragement <laughs> as they're proceeding. Harold, have you seen some Kiwi parents at sports games? <laughs> <laughs> I, have. I have. I have some horror stories. That's not that, coaching, I, I tell you. That is. <laughs> and I was going to say, you said the most important thing when a boss comes in each day is they're going to be themselves. What if they're a dropkick? If they're an absolute drop kick, we don't want them to be themselves around. They went home. You're talking about the, uh, the person who is on the team who is just not working out. Is well, no, you if your boss is, you know, you're saying the important thing, but when a oh, boss I arrives see. at work, for a start, they're going to be themselves. Yeah. Sometimes we work with people, you rather they weren't themselves, to be perfectly, perfectly honest. Um, yeah. But I suppose that is a, that's a, um, that's, 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 that's a problem for another day. Yeah, yeah, You yeah, believe yeah. in no, this coaching thing, a, thing a, don't a challenge. you? And it, look, I just wanted to leave your listeners with the yeah. thought that um, sometimes it helps staying a 
little bit closer to somebody who you're asking to step up to a bigger set of responsibilities and and just stay in their ear, folk, help them focus on short wins and be a supportive and helpful voice. We could use a little bit more of that um, in our management styles in general. Hey Harold, do we react better to someone we respect or to someone we fear? Uh, well, I tell you what, fear um, works well if you have positional power, meaning that if you're the boss and can fire people, um, then you can be as intimidating as you want as long as people feel that, hey, I can put up with this because it's worth the paycheck. But if you really want long-term commitment and people following you out because they believe it versus they fear the consequences, then you've got to work a whole lot more at engaging and, and connecting with people, not out of fear. That's the, the easiest type of leadership is to intimidate people by virtue of your positional power. That's not leadership. That's just abuse of rank. So how should people deal with it? Because I hear that a lot from people. They go, oh, look, I, I hate my work. I hate my boss. And, you know, it's a climate of fear. What yeah. should they do? Well, I think it, 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 for all of us walking into the workplace each day, we've got to remember um, we're walking in as adults. And, I, you know, I get, I, I talk to a lot of people about not being victims going into a place where you spend the majority of your day and for some people the majority of your life. And so even though we have bosses and managers and hierarchy and all of that, we're still adults. And adults have a right to express a view around what's going to make for an optimal role and those types of things. And if bosses get to the point where they're just ordering people around and intimidating and those kinds of things, I hope people feel the option to get up and walk. Because there's nothing worse than being a victim in a situation where you don't perceive you have any choice. Good one. Good thoughts. Good thoughts, Harold. Look forward to talking to you again next week. And don't forget, if you want to check out Harold, his website is www.sigmoidcurve.com, S-I-G-M-O-I-D curve.com, or follow him on Twitter at Dr. Harold Hillman, two L's. Hey, thanks, Harold. We'll Thank talk to you next Mark. week.